Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants, I'm back, guys, click that like button, subscribe to my channel, what's up, y'all, welcome back, guys, welcome back, got another great video for you guys today, as usual, you guys know the deal on this channel, it's all about setting the record straight, guys, stopping the lies, stopping the narratives, but most importantly, guys, it's from stopping them from rewriting the history, it's very important, guys, when I talk about rewriting the history, because this is what they are attempting to do, and they're not even hiding it anymore. They're doing it right in front of our eyes, guys, right in front of our face, man. They're trying to rewrite the NBA's history, guys. That's right. That's what we're going to talk about in this video, man. This is just, just a video, man, to all of you guys out there, man, for real. They're trying to rewrite the NBA's history, man. The LeBron James fans, the media, this whole circus, all they're trying to do, man, these guys, their podcasts, they're trying to rewrite the history of the NBA. We can't allow this to happen, guys. We're going to talk about that in this video, man, because it's very serious. And I want to thank you guys, man, everyone for standing up. Everyone that's been supporting my channel, guys, that's what you're doing when you're supporting my channel is because you know the deal in this channel. It's, all, it's always been about setting the record straight. It's always about putting some respect on Michael Jordan, the 80s and the 90s. You guys know that. That's what I told you guys from the start of my channel, man. They've been tearing these guys down with the lies and, and the narratives, and they've been attempting to rewrite the history, guys, bending reality. So thank you for all you guys for, like I said, rocking with me, man, for supporting my channel, commenting, all that stuff, guys. Thank you. And you guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll. So, yes, guys, like I said, man, I wasn't even going to do a video today. But I was like, you know what, man? It's been bothering me. This whole thing with LeBron James and his fans, the La Media, this whole circus that's been going on around him. I mean, just it's been going on for a while now, guys. And it obviously has gotten worse since he's been in L.A., really. It's just, you know, like I said, it's basically come to a head now. And it's just, like I said, it's laughable now how much of a disgrace this man is and all the, and the impact that he's had on the NBA and a negative, a negative impact. And when I told you guys from the start, man, the LeBron James fans, they've never been they have never been fans of basketball. They're not fans of basketball. It's not the NBA. It's basketball I talk about. They're not fans of basketball. They're only fans of LeBron James, guys, right? And one of the most obvious things that shows and proves this is the tearing down of the errors. Tearing, the, just straight tearing down the errors. Past players with lies and the narratives. They must continue to tear these guys down to do what? To lift LeBron James. And it's become, like I said, it's, it's disgusting now, guys. And it's serious now. It's important that we stop this. That we stand up and once again set the record straight on these fools. We cannot allow them to come out here and try to rewrite the record books. You got these fools out here now going through Michael Jordan's games, the record books, saying he didn't get this amount of steals or this many blocks. Or they were giving him more steals and more blocks at home. Are we really going to start doing this? Because then we got to open up the record books for all the players. It can't just be for Michael Jordan, y'all. And when you do that, it's going to point to what? What is it doing? Because once again, I ask these people at the end of the day, what is this doing? What is the end game here? To tear down the NBA's history at the expense of what? Of the NBA. At the expense of the NBA. So the LeBron James fans will tear down the history of the players. They'll say that Michael Jordan didn't play against anybody. And this is why I say it's important. It's not just about Michael Jordan, guys. I always told you that. It's not just about Michael Jordan. Because what I'm doing on this channel, setting the record straight, talking about Michael Jordan, standing up for Michael Jordan, so to speak. I'm also standing up for the era that I grew up in. I grew up watching the 80s and the 90s, the guys that played this era. It's not just Michael Jordan. When I put some respect on Michael Jordan, I'm putting respect on him and his era, right? By talking about the guys he went against, his contemporaries, and how much effort these guys gave. That's the key word you always hear me say on this channel. It's the effort that I watch these grown men give. They gave the effort. They showed up to work. They were there. So once again, guys... This is what it's about. It's not about people believing that Michael Jordan's the greatest of all time. That's nothing to do with that. Right? It's about, once again, guys, Michael Jordan and what he represented, his era represented. And the LeBron James fans, they continue to tear down the NBA's history. For what? For LeBron James? So that he looks good? So that he appears to be greater than everyone else? Once again, I'll tell you guys, and I've always said this, how great can these guys be today? If the players that came before them were not great, what are you standing on? You're not standing on anything. 
If all the people that trained you in something, right? All the people that trained you to become great, if they were not great, then how can you be great? It can't be. All the players that came in the NBA's history, right? From the beginning to now, this is what we're talking about. The guys taking things that the guys, the previous eras, right? Showed them. It's called being a pioneer. So these previous eras, these guys were pioneers. And all these things trickled down. This guy learned from that guy. That guy learned from this guy. And so forth and so on. The game progressed. It moved forward. And then came the 90s. That's what we talk about, the golden era. When the NBA reached its peak, the popularity, right? The personalities of the NBA, it all came together. The game on the court, everything was perfect at that time. Everything was going right. And this is what we allude to. Michael Jordan, once again, guys, and the players that I grew up watching, they were standing on the players that came before them, the greatness of those players. They were compared to the greatness. They weren't compared to mediocrity. Michael Jordan wasn't chasing Magic and Bird because they were okay or because they were garbage. Oh, they weren't that great. It was Magic and Bird weren't that great. Michael Jordan was chasing them because of their greatness, because of the winning. They were known as winners. They were the face of the NBA. When Michael Jordan came in, it was Magic and Bird. It was their league. But why was it their league? Right, because they had the on-court game. We all know that. But why? Because of the winning. They were winners. They galvanized the players around them. They galvanized the fans. The NBA, they revitalized the NBA. Right, they gave it a boost. And then Michael Jordan was coming in chasing these guys. He, if, if, my, if Magic Johnson and Larry Bird were not great, if the Michael Jordan fans were, went out there and were saying, oh, man, Matt Johnson ain't playing nobody. Matt Johnson garbage. Matt Johnson and Larry Bird, these guys ain't good. Larry Bird ain't athletic. He's a slow white guy. If people were saying that to support Michael Jordan, to make him look great, to lift him up, then what the hell would Michael Jordan be chasing them for? Then why would he be chasing them? It wouldn't make any sense. He was chasing them because they were great. They were known as winners. They were known as competitors. That's what they were respected for, going out there and giving it their all in the basketball court. Like I said, being true competitors, being professionals, man. Showing up for the fans, man. Playing for the love of the game. So we respected all these guys. And Michael Jordan stood on their shoulders, right? And he surpassed them. But that was the goal. That was the bar. It was greatness. Bill Russell, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, all the great players, Jerry West, Dr. J, Right, everyone, you're chasing greatness. You're not chasing mediocrity. They never tore down the previous eras. They never tore down the 80s to lift the 90s up. They never said all the guys in the 80s weren't that good. The 90s guys are so much greater because those guys weren't skilled. Those guys weren't great athletes. These guys are so much greater than them. How can Michael Jordan be great if all the guys that came before him were not that great? Then he can't be great. You're standing on nothing. If all the players today are so much greater than the players before, and the guys before had no skills, they weren't great athletes, they couldn't dribble the ball, they couldn't shoot, all this stuff, they couldn't run or jump, none of these things. If they couldn't do that, then how great are these guys today? They can't be that great then. What the hell did they learn from? The game went global for a reason in the 90s. There was a reason for it. The popularity of the game, it was balanced, right? There were different things that could draw different people. You'd have to be a diehard NBA or basketball fan to watch basketball back then because there are personalities that you could get and watch, right? Certain guys, the games, certain guys had certain games, right? There were post players. There were defensive guys. There were three-point specialists. There were the high flyers. You had the coaches that ran their systems. You had these things. Like I said, the guys showed up. So if you had a marquee matchup, you knew they were going to be there. You didn't have to worry about this nonsense. And you knew the guys were going to go out there and compete, man. And why did these guys do that? Because of the previous errors. That was the standard that we're always talking about in this channel, guys. That's the standard. That was the, sta the standard was to play 82 games. It wasn't a big deal to play 82 games when I was growing up. It was a badge of honor, but it wasn't a big deal because everyone was doing it or most guys were doing it or they were trying to do it. It wasn't a big deal. Now it's a big deal because ain't no one doing it. 
And guys complain about it. Guys didn't complain about it. They just did it. They played 82 games. So what? I'm supposed to play. That was the mentality. Show up. It was the standard. The guys I grew up watching were living up to the standard of the guys in the 70s, the guys in the 60s, the guys in the 50s. Right? The guys from the start of the NBA. It was the standard to go out there and compete, to play all the games you could, to push through the pain. If you weren't really injured, then you played. Those guys didn't get paid a lot of money. They didn't play for the money. They were playing to play. But today, the LeBron James fans, the La media, the so-called analysts, they'll tell you that these guys were plumbers and taxi cab drivers, that they were nobodies. Meanwhile, what have I told you? These guys were grown men that had to work other jobs, real jobs, right? Blue-collar jobs, hard-working jobs to support themselves, to support their families. And we're laughing at that? We're making a mockery of these grown men. And I told you, there were often also guys that fought in wars. There were guys who gave up years of their career to fight in a Korean war. What player today can say that they gave up money, gave up time playing NBA basketball in their careers for a war to go to the military? These guys don't know nothing about that kind of sacrifice, but they'll just narrow them down to plumbers and taxi cab drivers, unathletic white dudes. They were never called that back in the day. Larry Bird was never dis disrespected the way he is now. You hear what they, the LeBron James fans say about Larry Bird? When you try to say that Larry Bird's greater than LeBron James, which we all know he is, I'll never put LeBron James above Larry Bird. Hell no. But when the LeBron James fans hear that, they'll start talking about Larry Bird's not an athlete. He's this white dude. All of a sudden now, his, his, white, his color matters now. All of a sudden, once again, because he's white, he couldn't play basketball? The dude was in the NBA, but he's not an athlete now. No, he may not be the greatest athlete, but to say that Larry Bird was slow and unathletic is hilarious to me. Once again, it shows and proves that LeBron James fans were not around and they don't know or respect the history of the game. So they're willing to tear down the NBA's history for one player, for one player. But then the LeBron James fans will talk about the Michael Jordan fans as we're some bad group of fans. No, because once again, the true Michael Jordan fans are fans of basketball. Right. And they respected the competition. And more importantly, guys, they respected Michael Jordan's teammates. What do you notice a lot from the LeBron James fans, the La media, all these idiots on their podcast, anyone that supports LeBron James? What do they immediately do? They tear down LeBron James teammates at every turn. They blame this guy. Oh, this guy was hurt. Oh, this guy didn't make these shots. This guy shot this percentage. This guy only scored this many points per game. They're always blaming somebody. It's always someone else for whatever the reason is. I told you, if you're looking for an excuse, you'll always find it. If there's one there. And that's the LeBron James fan. That's the media. Always looking for someone to blame. Never putting the onus on LeBron James. So they never respected LeBron James' teammates. We, as Michael Jordan fans, we never tore down and blamed Scottie Pippen for these things. That's why we're laughing now and doing this. And we're highlighting all the times that he could have been blamed, but he never was. All the times that Scottie Pippen folded up, but no one pointed the finger at Scottie Pippen. All the times that Scottie Pippen wasn't there for Michael Jordan, but no one wants to talk about these things now. It's just one in nine without Pippen we hear. This is the nonsense. This is all from what? The LeBron James fan club, the media, trying to what? Rewrite the history and make it seem like what, guys? That LeBron, that, that Michael Jordan's teammates were greater than he was. All of a sudden, now Scottie Pippen was the reason the Bulls were winning? That was never the, that was never the way it was going down in the 90s. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Remember, I always tell you guys in this channel, I'm giving you guys the perspective right through the lens the view from someone who grew up in the 80s and the 90s watching this stuff. If you guys haven't noticed, I have a pretty good memory with a lot of this stuff, man. It's not a coincidence. Once again, guys, this is this is the way it goes. I remember a lot of this stuff because I watched a lot of this stuff. I continue to watch a lot of this stuff. So once again, this was my childhood. I'm, so I'm giving you the perspective, guys. I'm telling you right now, these are the facts. How it was going down the 90s as it relates to Michael Jordan, the 90s era of NBA, Scottie Pippen, and all these narratives and lies that the media and all the LeBron James fans will try to have you believe about Michael Jordan's career. Y'all weren't even around for this. This is why I always tell these clowns, please stop talking basketball before 2010. You guys can't do it. You weren't around for this. You don't know about the 90s era of NBA. You don't know about Michael Jordan, his contemporaries, the guys that he played against. Michael Jordan all of a sudden now is 6-0 oh because he played against nobody.
Once again, the, M the, the LeBron James fans winning to tear down the NBA's history, rewrite history. They're just going to rewrite it now. Michael Jordan wasn't the number one. It was Scottie Pippen now. Now we're going to say it was Pippen and Jordan, right? It wasn't Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. It was Scottie Pippen first and then Michael Jordan. Let's give Scottie Pippen the MVP trophies, the finals MVPs. We're going to give Scottie Pippen the scoring titles. Everything that Michael Jordan accomplished, we're going to give to Scottie Pippen because it's only because of Scottie Pippen that he accomplished these things. Meanwhile, all the other great players in NBA's history that have played with all the other great players that they played with, no one cares about that. All the LeBron James fans of the media want to talk about is Scottie Pippen. Once again, they'd have no respect for LeBron James teammates. They never talk about Dwayne Wade in a positive light. They never give up Anthony Davis any props and say he should have won his 2020 NBA Finals MVP. But they have all this energy to tell you that Dennis Rodman should have won that 96 Finals MVP. Once again, they were not even there to watch it because they would know if they were there that that's not true. Right? They have no energy to give Chris Bosh any props for that rebound that he got. Right? No. Ray Allen still... They'll say that Steve Kerr and John Paxson saved Michael Jordan. Once again, trying to rewrite the history. So all of a sudden now, the, the Phoenix Suns were up three games to two on the Chicago Bulls during that shot when Paxson shot it. So now they're rewriting the history saying Paxson saved Michael Jordan. No, the Bulls were up 3-2. Once again, let's lay out the scenario. Let's lay out the facts. It was, in fact, Michael Jordan that scored nine of the Bulls, 12 points in that quarter, all the points up until that John Paxson three. So once again, it was Michael Jordan keeping the Bulls within striking distance to allow Paxson to make that three. So Michael Jordan wasn't saved once again. And once again, it was Bulls were up three to two. And they'll tell you that Steve Kerr saved Michael Jordan. But they have no energy to talk about Ray Allen's shot. But that didn't save LeBron James, they'll tell you. That did not save LeBron James. No. Kyrie Irving's shot, they have no energy to give Kyrie Irving any props for the 2016 NBA Finals and all the points he scored. They want to tell you about Scottie Pippen in the Finals who never averaged 27 points a game in NBA Finals, never hit a game winner in an NBA Finals game, never scored 40 points in an NBA Finals game. Kyrie Irving did that twice alongside LeBron James to help LeBron James, but they have no energy, the LeBron James fans, the media, to give Kyrie Irving any credit. They're too busy talking about Scottie Pippen, the, the steals or the home steals that Michael Jordan may have or may have not gotten. Like, what the hell are we doing here? This is what I'm saying. This is a true meaning of a witch hunt, guys. You hear that, that term thrown out a lot, you know, all willy-nilly. This is a true witch hunt. The, Le the LeBron James fans of the media, they're out to get Michael Jordan to rewrite the history, guys. Rewrite Michael Jordan's history and tear down the NBA's history. And this is why I always tell you guys, it's very important that we don't allow them to tear down the NBA's history, guys, and rewrite that history and bend reality, guys, and say that Michael Jordan this or this era was this. These guys were plumbers and taxi cab drivers. All this nonsense. It's not true, guys. That's why I tell you, man, we owe it to these guys. Remember, it's not just about Michael Jordan. We're standing up standing up for the errors. We're standing up for the previous errors, man. The all-time greats. The guys that came that, that I grew up watching. And the guys that came before them. When I talk about Michael Jordan, like I said, I'm talking about everyone in the era. I've talked about many players on this channel. I don't care if people believe Michael Jordan's the greatest of all time or not. It doesn't matter. What I'm telling you right now is I will not allow the people to lie about Michael Jordan. I will not allow that. And people will be like, oh, why do you care about I told you I owe it to these guys. I owe it to them. See, you guys don't understand the principles and the values that I stand on. Those guys stood on those things. So once again, I'm respecting those guys that I grew up watching as a child, man, as a kid growing up, a teenager, all this stuff into adulthood. Once again, you turned on the TV and you wanted to see Charles Barkley. Hey, guess what, guys? Charles Barkley was there, man. You know what I'm saying? You turn on the TV and a kid, you wanted to see David Robinson. He was there. He showed up to work. Clyde Drexler, John Stockton. You knew John Stockton was going to be there. The man went and played a game after a car accident. These guys didn't allow this stuff to get in the way of the personal problems. They didn't have mental health issues and rest days. They didn't cry and, and moan. They didn't do this stuff. These guys, man, they're always doing this stuff. They're crying and moaning. They're flopping. They don't want to play 65 games. They damn sure don't want to play 80 games. But then they want the respect of the fans. See what I'm saying? How could you respect these guys? I respect those guys. That's why I do these videos. That's why it matters. It matters. It's, oh, Donnie, why you care, man? It don't matter, man. Once again, I say, if it didn't matter, then why is everyone trying to rewrite the history? Why are these guys going back in the record books to the 80s? This fool, this goof, Tom Haberstraw, he has no life. This is what he has to do. This is what the media is doing, guys. They're willing to tear down the NBA's history, rewrite the NBA's history, all this, all for LeBron James to make him be somehow the greatest of all time? 
or somehow make it seem that he's close to some of these guys that we all know he's not close to. He'll never be close to Michael Jordan. I don't give a damn what record books they go back and try to change. It don't matter because once again, the video footage is there. Some fool in the comments trying to tell me, yeah, you talk about the video footage. Well, the video footage says that Michael Jordan only got three steals, but they got him down for four steals or five steals. So you talking about the video footage. Dude, when I'm talking about the video footage, I ain't talking about numbers. I'm talking about the defense that Michael Jordan played. Once again, you fool, you goof. Michael Jordan's not known as an all-time great defensive player because of the steals he got. It, that's not why. It has nothing to do with the number of steals and blocks he accumulated. He earned a reputation by his play on the court, right? The intensity, the effort he gave consistently, guys. Locking guys down, moving his feet, doing all those things. Playing great on-ball defense, great help defense. Not standing there with his hands on his hips like LeBron James. Walking back on defense like LeBron James. He hustled back on defense. He made plays. That's why he's known as a great defensive player. That's what the video footage shows, you fool. Freaking idiots, man. These guys, I tell you, man, you're talking to a bunch of idiots out here. And this is what the LeBron James fans are, the La Media, all these idiots with their podcasts, these LeBron James apologies with their YouTube channels. They're a bunch of goofballs, man. They stand on nothing. They value nothing. And they're willing to rewrite their history, tear down the NBA's history to give you some nonsense. This is why I tell you, they're not educating you. They're not educating you. They're not going to give you the facts about the past errors. All they do is look for excuses. So what will they say? Oh, well, Bill Russell won those championships because he played in the league and only had eight teams. They're always looking for an excuse why someone else did something that LeBron James couldn't do. Right? Oh, Michael Jordan only won those scoring titles because he took all the shots. LeBron James took a hell of a lot of shots in his career and won one scoring title. Got one to show for it. But then he'll turn around and say, I can lead the league in scoring uh, every year if I wanted to. It don't add up. It don't add up. Only Michael Jordan was able to lead the league all those years in scoring because he took the most shots. That's not how it works, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, they're not being honest with you. But then they'll talk about LeBron James' all-time points, but then they won't talk to you about how many times LeBron James shot the ball the most in history to get those points. Only Michael Jordan was shooting the ball. It's a joke, guys. Once again, they're not giving you the honest facts. It's always an excuse for somebody. Oh, this guy had this teammate. Oh, this guy had this amount of help. LeBron James, once again, he didn't have no help. He had a hell of a lot of help, LeBron James. He had just a amount of help, if not way more help than most NBA superstars. And once again, LeBron James did less with more than anybody else in history. Anyone else in history, he did less with more. Remember that. He has a losing record with all that help, all that deck stacking, all the flopping, all the favoring he gets, all the calls he got, guys getting suspended in the finals. How many players Michael Jordan got suspended in the NBA finals? The Detroit Pistons were beating the hell out of Michael Jordan every single year. Ain't no one suspending these clowns. They kept coming back every game. Right? Knocking Pippen out. But all these years later, they want to talk about Scottie Pippen. I don't respect the LeBron James fans, any of these clowns, man. Once again, guys, it's disgusting. We must not allow this to continue, man. This is why we're standing up. It, may, it matters, guys. We can't allow them, once again, like I said, to rewrite the history and continue to tear down the past errors with the lies and the narratives, guys. You guys know the deal, man. I'll catch you guys on the next one.